Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to go over the first part of your final project, um, especially for those of you who missed this part. Uh, at this point, you should have your final project guide completed. Um, if you need to use that while we go through this next part, please make sure you have that open, especially the sprite section, so that you know which uh, images you're going to be uploading. Right? Make sure you're logged into Code Studio Lesson 27, and I'm working on Bumble 3. All these bubbles are linked, so it really doesn't matter where you create your stuff. It'll all carry over. So I'm just working on bubble three. Um, and yes, as you may notice in my videos, I usually don't have my face covered, but I'm at school. So I have to be wearing my mask and I happen to be wearing glasses today. But here is my costume. All right, animation tab. In your animation tab, please go ahead and uh, pause this video uh, and upload. Um, the animations that you're going to be using. All right, for example, I have my player. I have the star that's going to be negative points, the star that's going to be positive points. I have my platform. I have my blue screen and my red screen and my background. All right, I think that's going to be what I'm going to use for my game. If I find that I, there was something else, I'll come back and I'll upload it. But go ahead and pause the video and upload your images. All right, uh, if you have any questions about uploading images, please send me a message. I'll go over a few things now. Um, uploading images here, you can use the sprites that are already here, or if you got a picture from Google, make sure you save it to your computer and then upload your file here, all right? You can also draw your own um, if you want to. Uh, sometimes when you upload pictures, there might be a white background. So if you find that issue where you have a white background, um, for example, if I upload this picture here, I have a white background. There are a few different things you can do. One of the things that I found works, uh, if it's if it's a big like rectangular space, you can use this rectangle selection block. Highlight that section. Oops, there we go. Uh, there we go. Highlight that section and then click delete on your keyboard, delete. And then it will delete that area. And you can drag the rectangle around. So I'm gonna just drag it over here to this side. And it's going to delete that area. Now, um, obviously this doesn't work completely because I can't need to delete this area. So another tool that you can use is this paint drop. One of these, either one. Before you paint, make sure that your color, your primary color, is set to transparent. Transparent. All right. Now you can kind of click around. And as you click around, it'll hopefully disappear or uh, clear up most of your picture. But if it doesn't, I'm just like clicking around as much as I can. Um, I just I'm clicking, click, click, click. If it doesn't, your other options are to use the paint pen tool, set it to the biggest one or whatever size you need. And you can use the pen tool to erase. Again, make sure that your primary color is set to transparent. And I'm just coloring over the white spots. This can be a little tedious. There are other ways to do this on like your computer or on Word, but I don't have time to go through all of those. If you want to Google how to remove background on Chrome, you can do that. Um, but I'm not going to go over that. The other option is this little stroke tool right here. If you click and drag, it's straight. So for example, for me, for these straight edges, that's helpful. So I can just click and drag along the straight edge and it will clear up that. And I can just click and drag along here and it'll clear that up. All right, whatever you need. I already did this earlier, so I have my star up here. Mm -hmm. But that's how you would remove the background. Uh, if your file needs to be resized because it's too big, um, I would suggest Google because <laughs> I can't show everybody. I have a Mac, so it's a little bit different. So Google how to resize picture on Chromebook, how to resize picture on Mac, and there'll be videos and tutorials to go over that. So make sure you do that. Okay, once you have everything uploaded, now we can go into our 
uh, coding. Oh, and one more thing I want to say is if you're looking for a platform, you have two options. You can make your own, draw your own, use this cool rectangle tool here, change the thickness of the outline or whatever. All right, make your own. Oh, I forgot to change the color. I don't know. Maybe I want it to be red on the outside. There we go. And maybe you want it to be a different fill color on the inside, so you can use the paint bucket to color that. Or maybe you want it to be a different color. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Um, or you can go to Google and Google. I used, um, what did I Google? I Googled um, rectangle button clip art. Rectangle button clip art. And I used one of these. Hello. No. Um, I just used one of these. You can also use like actual objects. Maybe you have like, um, I don't know, if your game is about food, right? You can look up a baguette clip art. I'm trying to think of things that are typically flat, right? You can use a baguette as a platform. Up to you. Uh, you can use like lily pads, right? Lily pad clip art if you have. Um, it doesn't have to be rectangle, right? It could be a round or circular object like this. Up to you. Anyhow, once you have your sprites in here, or your animations uploaded, now we'll, you can go into coding. So let's go into our coding. I'm not really following the instructions that are here. Um, you can, but if you're following me, you're probably following the way that I'm doing it. So let's go ahead and create our sprites. Now, if you're going to have a background for your game, if you uploaded a picture to be your background for your game, then like your main background, then you need to add it here. And it should be the first thing that you add. That way it's the first thing that's drawn on the screen. So create sprite and set animation. Don't forget to change the name. Um, try not to call it background because there's already a block that's called background. So maybe use game background. That's what I've been using. Game background. Game background. Make sure the spelling matches and the capitalization. And then find your picture. Mine is background landscape. There it is. I run my program and I should see it. Now, if the picture that you uploaded is too small, it's showing white spaces around the edge, then you need to use the scale block here. Scale. Mine's good, so I don't need to, but I'll show you. And then choose a number that's bigger than 1. Maybe 1.5. You'll see that it, like, zooms it in, so it fills up more space. If your picture is too big, you're not seeing everything on your screen, then you can make it smaller, 0 0.5. Right, that's too small because now I see all the white space around. I don't need this, so I'm going to remove it. Okay, now let's get our, um, our objects on the screen. So I'm going to put my platform. If you're going to have platforms, if you don't have platforms, you can skip this step, right? and move on to your, your other elements. But I'm going to add my platforms on my screen. All right, variable. I'm going to call it platform one, because I'm going to have two. So platform one, platform two. Platform one. Uh, that's my button. Awesome. So now <laughs> notice that my platform is way too big, so I actually have to scale it and make it smaller. So I need my sprite that scale. Platform 1, and I think I've played around with this and I have settled on 0 0.25 as the scale. There it is. Now I'm just going to move it out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to change my chord in here, just to move it out of the way. And I'm going to repeat the same process for platform 2. Okay, so create sprite. Platform 2, Platform 2. Uh, 
animate scale platform two. And I'm just going to shift it over. Again, right now I'm focusing on just getting everything on my screen. Eventually things will move and go to different positions, but I'm just focusing on getting everything on my screen. That way I know how it looks, and I change the size if I need to, fix anything I need to. Awesome. At any point, you can always pause the video and look at the code. If I'm going, if you're not following along, if it's moving too fast, right, pause the video and look at the code. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but for my items, right? Item one, item two, item three. I have three items. I have, I'm going to be adding two gold stars for good stuff and then a red star for negative points. You do not need to use negative points. So if you only have one item, that's okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, but for my items. Item one. Item one. And item one, I'm going to make it my yellow star. Notice it's way too big, so I need to scale it. Item one. And I think I discovered 0 0.08 works. There. I'm just going to move it up here for now. I'll be coming back later to change this, but just for now, I'm going to move it up to the top. And now I need to add my other yellow star because I want to have two stars that are falling down that are good. Set animation, and I will need to scale it as well. Item one. Item one. Oh, sorry. This is an item one. Now this is item two. Item two. Item two. Item two. Right. Now remember, you should be copying as much as you need. Um, Maybe you only have one thing that's falling down and it's just one item that's resetting over and over. If that's the case, then you only need to do this once. If you have a lot of things coming down the screen, then you need to do it for each for each element. There's my star. I'm going to move it over. All right. I'm going to do it again one more time for my third item. Item three. Item three. Item three. Oops, that was the wrong block. Uh, red star. And I want it to be at 200. All right, there we go. I've got my two yellow stars and my red stars. Those are going to be the ones that fall and reset, fall and reset. Okay. The last, the one other thing I need, there are a couple more, but the next thing I need is my player. So I'm going to go ahead and add my player. And I'm just repeating the same process. So I'm going a little bit fast on the video, but again, you can always pause the video and it's just the same process. And there's my player. Okay, now if you're going to have other screens, like a windscreen or a loose screen, I'm going to have a game over screen and a windscreen. I also need to add these into my code. All right, so I also need to add them here. But there's going to be one more thing that I need to add. So, for example, I have windscreen. I'm going to say windscreen. Uh, I'll call it you win. You win. Notice what happens when I add this. Now, if you're not adding any extra screens, you don't need to do this. You're done. But if you are, make sure that you add your sprites. Notice I'm seeing it right away. I don't want to see it right away, right? Um, we don't want this to show up at the beginning of the game. So here we need to add one more thing, which is the visibility block. And set that visibility to false. That way you don't see it. I'm going to do the same thing for my lose screen, my game over screen. I'm about to run out of time, so that's why I'm going a little fast, but I will continue this in the next video. All right, see you in the next one.